Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome. Today is Ghana's Independence Day, 6th of March. And uh, before we could even understand anything, when we were children, they, they taught us how to sink. Uh, in English, in P. You know, during the Independence Day, they will send us to, uh, to go and march, <laughs> you know, and as we grew up, or as we grew up, I think that uh, there's a certain love that we have for our country, and I think most Ghanaians have that, they love the country. Um, they're proud of their country. It's innate. You meet any Ghanaian anywhere around the world. They like the country. They love the country. And they love their culture. They love our food. You know, I think we have some certain level of, uh, you know, pride of the country that we come from, which is good, which is very good. And you 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 will not meet any great nation whose citizens are not proud of their country no great nation i think that apart from uh, the belief in our country the belief in god you know they believe in ourselves and they believe the next one perhaps they believe in our country i think these three things um, help people to succeed you believe in some power somewhere which is God for me you believe in yourself and you believe in the country that you come from and some people would also believe in the country that they live and so most most people around the world love the country that they come from they are passionate about the country and its success but citizens everywhere when it comes to the mistakes of their country, the errors of their country, the negatives of their country, I think that we uh, exaggerate them. Every citizen, anywhere you go to any country, anywhere the people exaggerate this, the mistakes and they tend to compare themselves with other countries. And um, if you go to that other country, to the citizens, they would also tend to exaggerate their mistakes and sometimes look down upon the achievements that they have had. And this is very prevalent uh, when it comes to African countries. You know, we tend to be that much more focused on the negatives so much. We exaggerate them. You know, we self-criticize, which is good, which is good. But uh, we should not do them so much that we overlook the few things that are also unique with us that are very much, you know, people are envious of that and i think just as you want to look at all the negatives and the bad things that we continue to criticize we should also not overlook some of the good things that we we also see as a people so not only with respect to our country ghana but you know the rest of the continent that we should be proud of ourselves but for us to succeed in this life anywhere you would have to believe in the country that you live in. You would have to believe in the country that you come from for you to succeed there. If you, you, if you cannot see the prospects, if you cannot see the positives, if you cannot see the dignity of the people in your country that you live, especially if you live in the country that you come from, then you will find it difficult to succeed in that country because you will never focus on the positives you will never focus on the good things you will never focus on what you can do to improve situation so if you are the one who you know you are always castigating focusing on the negative which gets all of us our attention and sometimes when you express belief in your country as an african the obvious word that people use is that are you a pan-africanist <laughs> Are you a Pan-Africanist? When you, when you express belief and, and, and confidence in the African, they say that are you a Pan-Africanist. 
when you, you express your confidence in the country in spite of the problems in, in spite of the challenges then the next obvious thing is that what do you see that we all don't see now it's a choice you can decide to live all your life focusing on all the negatives in our country and we talk about all the negatives and um, there is no country in the world that does not have negatives and that, that we would not, we will not use those as, as as an excuse but if you go any country in the world they will also find their negatives and they focus on that so my point is if you want to succeed the country that you live in the country that you come from if you don't believe in that country if you if you're not hopeful for that country if you if you if you don't if you don't you are not positive of that country you will not succeed in that country and yet every country that you go no matter how poor that country is, people there's somebody somewhere who is better than the other person why because there are prospects that they see i'm not talking of people who are stealing people who are corrupt you know, i'm not talking of those i'm talking of people who genuinely are making effort progress those people believe in their country they believe in their country if you see the most successful uh, uh business people entrepreneurs on the continent they those who are Africans, they believe in the continent. They see the prospects of the continent. They they, they are very much hopeful of the future of the continent. They know the, the, the things that the continent is in doubt. Same. And so if you have, you know, you have dreams, you have goals, you have ideas, you want to become great, you cannot focus on the negativity, the negatives in your country all the time and become great in your country. So our continent is our concern. Our country is our obligation. We all want prosperity for our country and our continent. That's our whole desire. I think if you meet 100 Africans, maybe 90, 80 percent, you know, want the prosperity of the continent, the prosperity of our various countries. And and the other thing is that we, we probably don't have many people who see the, 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 the we want the prosperity, but I don't think we have a lot of people who see that prosperity as our duty, as our obligation, as our obligation, as our individual responsibility to make sure that our continent uh, becomes prosperous, and our continent uh, develops. And so sometimes we just look at the politicians and wait for them to see the president. And but it's our responsibility. All of us is our responsibility uh, to make sure that our continent, our country, Ghana, develops. Our treasure is in the strength, the knowledge, the skill, the expertise of our people. The treasure that we have as a people is in the knowledge, is in the is in the strength, is in the skill, is in the expertise of our people. It's not necessarily in the gold, in the oil, in the diamond. No, it's first in the is is in the intelligence, is in the skill, is in the humanity that we have as a country. You know, and we are we are you know there are better days ahead. And we can change this uh, 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 this uh, uh, um, narratives if you focus on the development of our people, because the people who who will see any other thing, the gold is not the one who's going to see the people. It's the people, the value, the attention that we give to our people. So if we if we continue to take the people, uh, if you continue to hold the people into indignity, if you continue to value our people, if you continue to you know, uh, 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 focus on the quality of our people, then we have uh, better prospects. And I think that Ghana is not that far. Yes, there are, there, you know, every once in a while we make noise and we, we say whatever we want to say. But I think when when there is a threat, we can see that uh, a lot of our people come together and, and they are passionate about their country, which is good. So let's all make our contribution to make our country develop, you know, and, and, and if have value for our people have value and dignity for our people wherever position that you have in this country and even those who live because there are a lot of our people who live outside the the country outside the continent but one thing is for sure they are always looking back home they are always calling they are always chatting they're always reading the newspaper why because it's their country they may have naturalized in another country it doesn't matter. They still look up to the country. They are hopeful. They want the best for the country. You know, so uh, we will not produce. Sometimes the politicians talk about fight of corruption and all those. Yes, we need to fight them. We need to fight them. But um, I think that 
patriotic citizens uh, uh, you are better off fighting corruption with, with with citizens who are patriotic you're better off yes you set the institutions and everything but if you meet any great president if you meet any great leader of any country they are very patriotic they love their country they want the best for their people that itself is enough for them to be committed to the development of their country you cannot be stealing from anything that you're helping to build so if you're proud of building it then you will not be the one stealing from it so when they talk about politicians uh, stealing uh, stealing in every you know one two three four i mean any other african countries that they mention is because the patriotism is is sometimes is created as a just for the occasions it's not a core belief those who have the core belief of being patriotic seeing the country as their obligation its development those they don't have problem with 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 corruption they don't they are not the ones who are trying to the contract is ten thousand they want to make it fifty thousand they are not the ones trying to uh cheat their way to amass wealth for themselves why because this they are patriotic they love their country they love its people they want dignity for their people and so if you want a people if you really want to fight corruption apart from you know in addition to the building of the institutions and everything one one of the things that we all can also develop is the patriotism and the patriotism is not just about when ghana black stars are playing <laughs> no it's also the patriotism is not just for the football it's not only for the music of sarkodia or music of shatawari or Padu, you know but it's also towards the development of our country and so when you see patriotic citizens they fight for the development of their country they give their people a chance they prioritize their people one of the things that we can do to develop and as you're doing, I, I can see that there's a lot of uh, prospects. No matter what, you, me, me, people can talk of politics and I'm for NDC, I'm for MPP. Me, I'm for the development of our country. And if it falls within MPP, fantastic. If you get a good leader in NDC who wants to develop, I'm ready for him. My concern is for our country to develop. So I am not for any group of people who only get into politics or get into civil service only for for them to get a livelihood i am i abhor that i i don't like it no we want to see our people treated fairly in our own country and so um if you love our country this is how we want to see we want to see that most of our people majority of our people get education majority of our people become prosperous you know they become skilled and and they are confident they are proud of the of their heritage they are proud of their identity they develop on, on on our strength you know we develop on our strength you know and we treat now that now some of the threats of our to our development there are threats to our development part of largely part of it as i see it now is a superstition yeah, I don't think that if you don't deal with superstition, large part, a large part of it is coming from religion. You know, when people are conditioned to only think in terms of um, they are not using their thinking well when when there's a problem or when they want to go to the next stage. They, they over reliance on something they call uh, God. God is there, but God is not against use of uh, the use of our mind, application of principles and systems and structures for development. You know, so when it comes to our development, our progress, they will require planning and structures, you know, and training development of our people than for somebody to just be telling us that only oh, God, God, God. And those people are always talking about God will help us. God. No, when it comes to our development, it's our responsibility. It's our duty. And it's the duty of, of you. Of, you know, it's your duty. It's my duty to make sure that majority of our people can think through issues well without clouding a lot of, 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 you know, people can go and sit somewhere just because they want to become better uh, in their livelihood. And so they don't think that that is, that is going to happen according to the quality of the development of their mind. And I think that is a threat uh, to our progressive uh, development where majority of our people should be able to uh, 
let um, reduce the superstitious way of looking at things you know and be able to look at practical ways of lifting yes, if you're in charge of any institutions look at how you can build the institution well to benefit the people if you lose though if you leave you leave those things there and you go and say that you want to consult a medium then that is a threat and um, another threat is the unproductiveness of some of our, our cultural practices you know cultural practices that raise people treat people with money and with prestige in society above the other one who does not have money or who does not have a, a position or who might should be treated with respect with dignity that's the bottom line so if you look if you see anything that looks like you then you should, we should be able to let our people know that every human deserves respect and dignity and deserves hearing you know so lack of clarity in thinking superstition and sometimes sometimes when they meet other foreigners especially the, those who look differently light-skinned people we try to think that they are wiser than us especially if you have not lived with them in their countries in other culture i think we should be able to lift a lot of people to see people whether they are men or women or white or black chinese or indian we treat everybody with, with the same because a lot of them take advantage of that when we, we see another foreigner because of the history because of the colonization we try to lift a lot of these people above us and uh, which is not good um, part of it is uh, it doesn't even matter whether they have gone to school or they have not gone to school uh, there's something subconsciously that we, we constantly have to correct so that we can treat everybody with respect with 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 dignity you know with equity not because you look like a male or you look like a white person or you look like a chinese and so i listen to you more than i will listen to uh, another person who looks like me no you should be able to lift the confidence of our people you know squarely so that they can stand up you don't have to hate another person no but everybody deserves the same kind of uh, respect if they're human beings and so the country we love this is ghana we love it so much we love the continent i could not opt to live any other place but here we love it and we are passionate for its development okay, so if our people we can also focus on the development of the character of our people the work ethics the honesty the the, the promptness uh, 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 um, um, adaptability to technology you know things that will shape the future of our of our continent of our country those things we should give more attention to but well, that's our nations uh, develop so we all if you're born in this Ghana you love the country and that we know I don't know how they put it maybe it's the food <laughs> maybe it's the what is it they put something in us that we so much cherish about country you know and then whenever you are in another country and you see somebody who looks like a Ghanaian you know you say wow oh. he said it looks like a Ghanaian it's a Ghanaian and you're happy and I think all countries have that so it's our responsibility to make sure that our country uh, develops a country develops so most people I mean almost everybody loves their loves the country that they come from and I think that Ghanaians raise it to a higher level we love our country dearly um, just that some of the things that we still you know trying to deal with part of it is cultures part of it uh, is structural failures part of it is history but we'll come out we'll come out I think that we we are on the right path as I see it now you know so if you get in in our, in our leadership people who, who don't want money for themselves but people who want to make sure that even if those systems that are not working were not created by us we would want to do something within our power to make sure that uh, our country develops and our people live in in prosperity our people live in dignity we can we can continue to have 50 percent of your of your young people not not being able to read not be able to write not be able to do mathematics what else can they do if you have majority of them like that so you can see that with right leadership and with right heart a lot can be achieved in in a very limited you know very 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 little time and that's why i see i hear people compare uh, say ghana and korea and singapore and how they 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 all had independence and how come some people are they are developed and we are not we are not i think development is consciousness development is deliberate development is not by chance and so if you look over our time that we had independence had independence and all those 
if you look at it where did we have plan to to develop and were there and which were the enemies that we were fighting how many of our people had we trained to handle which position which areas of our economy so it's deliberate was there a workable document that we, we had not just constitution not just politics but workable document to develop and civilize the people did we have that and um, if you look at it i don't think that there was something of that sort and look at all the coup d'etats that came around people leadership who trained Kwame Nkrumah how to lead nobody trained him so he did his, his bit and then somebody some people also came and you know wasted the whole thing and then it kept like that but I I, I, don't, I think it takes a while for nations to also develop and now the African situation is not you I, I don't compare that the, the Ghanaian or the African situation to a lot of other countries it's a whole different thing it's not an excuse I'm not making an excuse for where we should have been. But I also think that we have different kind of situation to deal with. And um, gradually, uh, we will pick and we will get there. And I'm very much hopeful that uh, if you look at the passion of, of our people for us to live in dignity, we respect ourselves. Sometimes you go somewhere and some guy looks at you like, ah, oh, you're African. You know, and but you don't have that consciousness of inferiority in that country. You, you think like, what? What is it that you know that I don't know? I'm probably even better than. We have that from this country. We have that. That confidence that you meet another guy, um, you know, a white guy usually, and you don't think like they are better than you. And if it's in their mind that they even look down for you, you don't see yourself that way. You are able to question them. You know, you're able to tell them what you think. Why? Because they put that in us. They put that in us. And that is a very good thing that they put in us. So they, this, this is a country we love. It's a country we love, you know, and, and we cannot succeed in a country that we don't believe in. We love our country. We should also move it to a stage where we know that if I live in this country, I have to believe in its prospects, in its prospects, and I have to work towards that. And so if I'm doing business, it's because I love the country and its people. And so if my service is not good, I improve it to serve my people. If I teach, I teach for the dignity of our people. If I, if I'm a politician, the same. I'm into politics for the dignity of our people, for the country that we so love. You know, so I think that there are a lot of things that we have that we sometimes I guess overlook because the negativity is overblown or the negatives are, have been you know exaggerated so much. Yes, we have, we still have a lot to do it. A lot of uh, you know situations poverty we still have a lot to do with manufacturing processing we still have a lot to do with producing making sure majority of our people come out with the sciences you know with with, with the engineering with the chemistry with the medicine a lot that's how we are going to uh, get a lot of things solved um, but we also have to know that without us having a sense that the treasure is in the strength, is in the dignity, is in the skill, is in the expertise of our people. So whether they are here or are they anywhere, is a common goal that a country can develop. And a country, I think that uh, I meet some other African friends, and they, there are a lot of things that look they look at in Ghana and say, "Wow." Some of them just say that I, I just love to be here. I don't want to be in my country. There's something about the Ghanaians I like. And some of them, a lot of them, even though we don't believe that we are trustworthy, a lot of us don't believe that we are honest, because every country's citizen hold their country and its citizens in high ethics. So it's okay for people not to believe that we are honest. But the foreigners, a lot of them believe that we are very honest. We are very calm. We are very respectful. You know, we may not be very much aggressive, but there is, a, I mean, people, have friends from other African countries and they, they have that for us. We are the only ones who sometimes don't look at that as an advantage. That there are advantages. Yes, there are other things that we would have to improve. There are other things that we would have to work on. But I think that uh, the Ghana model is a good model that can be improved. Even in our politics, you see how one, one party can step up for the other to take over without in spite of all the noise that they do if they even try to steal it and they were caught they just bow out that's a good thing 
and sometimes you hear on the news that the the minister is trying to explain why the other thing didn't work so most a lot of most african countries you don't hear that where a political uh, office holder will come and explain why this is explaining to the people it may not be the best of standard in every around the world but at least it's not as bad as some other african countries somebody will tell us that why are you comparing yourself with those that are not working how about those that are working <laughs> <laughs> yes, but sometimes you can feel miserable if you if you compare yourself with the so that very so called top, and you don't have the infrastructure support for it. You don't have the the, the the mental structure for it because growth is in stages, and so we can we can you yes you can compare yourself with whatever developed country that you think there are, but you can also over not you don't have to overlook. The, the the efforts and the progress that we have made because it takes a while for a country to develop as particularly african country why because a lot of we are trying to we are pushing ourselves into a lot of things that we were not i think for instance the democracy you know we are trying to adapt uh, even the english you know there's a lot that we are trying to adapt let's face it there's a lot that we are trying to Yes, understand because of how uh, our culture develops. If you look at food, look at a lot of our foods are not eaten anywhere apart from here. You know the way we do our things, the way we marry, the way we, we, we name our children. A lot of things are very unique to the way we do things. And what, what makes you think that because you went to school to learn that English, it means that you know the English way of doing things? No, <laughs> it's a different thing. So I think that. You will not succeed in any country that you don't believe in, in any country that you don't have hope in. And so, apart from God, your belief in God, apart from your belief in yourself, the next thing is you have to believe in the country that you come from, the country that you live. If you believe in that country, you will see the prospects. So don't be the one on the radio every day telling us about all the bad things. Once in a while, look at the good things. And I would rather even focus on saying more the good things and telling us how to correct the bad ones than just talking about just the negative, the negative, the negative, the negative. Because there's other side where you meet, you see some of our people who 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 want to be here, but the negatives are too much in here. Here, no. The strategy is not just to focus on just the negative. You focus on the positive and you correct the negative then you have better prospects. So you want to do anything here? You want to build a business in Ghana? Believe in it. It's the best country that we have. We are confident in the prospects of our country. You can't sacrifice any other thing for it. You travel, go anywhere, you come home, you see the temperature drops. <laughs> because it's one of the best countries that you should have, you, anybody else could be born. And, and I know that if you go to Nairobi, um, um, uh, Namibia, the same, they will say the same about their country. If you go to Egypt, they will say the same about their country. If you go to Nigeria, maybe Nigerians have a problem trying to admit that their country is great. Majority of them just cast. And that's why that, you see the patriotism is low. That's why the politicians are doing a lot of dangerous things there. But um, our continent is our concern. Our country is our obligation. And we want the prosperity of our country. We want the prosperity of our continent. And we have to hold our people in high esteem. You know, we have to treat our people with respect. And that's what I love about this current president. You can see that it's in his language. And you can see that's one of the things. Leadership is not by chance. I don't think that you just have to push anybody to become a president of a country. No. I think that there's a, there are a lot of things that, that cook somebody to take a, a presidential position. And if you make the mistake to put somebody there who was only made out of politics, it's a danger. Yes, there should be a component of politics. There should be a component of education. There should be a component of work experience. There should be a component of having experience in other cultures. There should be a world view that the man has more than, or the woman, more than just his village. That is, you know, there should be development of character. Is Does the man have integrity? Does the man believe in constant upgrade of, 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 of knowledge? Does the man have any any track record of helping people 
before you become a president. You can become an assemblyman. We can bear with that. You can become even a minister. Some, some ministerial positions can just be politics. But for you to become a president, there's something that you should have had. And so, me, if I see anybody become president, I really don't think about whether the man is going to perform or not. No, I just look at his pedigree. I just look at what has prepared him to be there. And if I see his background and what has prepared him, you can go to sleep. You will work. You will work. It will not fail you. But if you just put anybody who just follows, you know, a lot of these guys who just follow politics or you know, military and they become president, they can't do much because they can only perform at that point according to the investment that they have made in themselves. You know, so it doesn't just happen that <laughs> just put anybody there. <laughs> no. So the country will have. If you get the right leader, the country will, will go. If you understand, it's not just about changing the constitution and changing all the, but you start to develop the people, develop the capacity of the people, you develop the education of the people, you, you, you start to give them attention. You cannot live in a country where the richest in your country are foreigners. No, you change that. Make sure that the people who control the finances, the people who control your banks, the people who control the most critical things in your country become the citizens. Because after all, what is development? It's prosperity. We all want. We all want prosperity. Better houses, better, better roads, better telephones, better hospitals. That's all we want. And if your people are poor, then how are you going to create that? You know, so we all want the prosperity of our people. And so when I have something, I give it to the person who I think deserves it in my country. It happens all over the world. You go to China and you want to do business. Do you think that? <laughs> do you think that the Chinese?